Hi guys, welcome back to Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. We are so excited to have you here today. Today I am going to talk about alternate tips, guides, tricks to rolled flowers. Um, and in doing that, we are going to roll a cardstock flower, a felt flower, and a leather flower. So that's gonna be fun. I'm gonna give you guys some fun tips and tricks um, and just show you the difference um, in the mats that you need to use, the tools that you need to use to cut it, um, and we're gonna have a good time doing it. Okay, so for our supplies today, it's really pretty simple. Uh, we do need a light grip map, our fabric grip map, and our strong grip map. Uh, we're gonna need our fine point blade, our rotary blade, and our knife blade. And then I also have some cardstock. This is probably around between 60 and 80 pound cardstock. Uh, this is a wool felt from Benzie Designs that we love, love, love. Um, it's a nine by 12 sheet. And then I have um, some tooling leather. This is probably two to three ounces. Um, you can cut up to seven ounces on your, um, seven ounces in thickness on your Cricut Maker. Um, but just for the sake of this project today, I'm using a thinner uh, felt so that it will roll better. Uh, we do have our Lynn Lily glue gun, some glue sticks, and then I have this wonderful um, tool by Cricut. If you guys um, don't know about this, this is in their paper crafting toolkit set. And this is called a Cricut quilling tool. It's a really neat uh, tool to work with cardstock and paper. So I'm excited to show you guys that. Uh, that should be it for our supply list. We are gonna go jump into design space and I will show you really quick um, the file that we're gonna be using for today's projects. Okay, so we are in design space right now. Um, we're gonna go ahead and upload the rolled cut file uh, that we're gonna use today. Uh, they're in here somewhere, so I'm going to search really quickly for them. Um, these are some awesome files that are available on our website, makersgonnalearn.com. Uh, we have several different um, rolled flower cut files you can see right here. So they give uh, some fun different um, looks. Each of them does give a, a different look. Like this top, um, on the top row, the second from the left, gives a really cute like fingery looking um, kind of fluid look. It's really neat. I will say uh, these these designs like this one in particular, you do want to cut at a larger size. If you try to cut it, especially on felt at a smaller size, it sort of disintegrates and falls apart. Uh, so keep that in mind. This one is particularly good for cardstock at like an 11 and a half inch uh, cutting size. Um, but there are so many fun ones here. Um, for the sake of this specific uh, tutorial, I wanna use the same exact uh, cut file for um, each of our materials. So I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna cut out the same one out of cardstock, uh, the same file out of felt, and the same file out of leather. Um, and I love this one. This is probably my favorite out of all of them. Um, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not. It's uh, the middle row, um, second from the left and it gives, it's a really pretty rose look. So I'm going to just press insert image, and then I will size this. I'm gonna start uh, with my cardstock. Uh, I do have a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, so I'm gonna size this up to 11 and a half inches so that we don't waste any of our uh, material. So I have that sized up to um, 11 and a half. Now I'm just gonna hit make it. Press continue because it looks good on my map. I'm connecting to my machine right now via USB. It's our favorite way to connect um, at Makers Gonna Learn. And then I am going to, um, I did say it was 60 to 80 pound cardstock. Um, I'm gonna choose the medium, which is the 80 pound because I'm actually not sure, I didn't take a look. Uh, but I would rather be safe than sorry and put a little bit too much pressure on there. We will just do default there. Um, it does tell us to have our fine point blade in clamp B. I do have that already um, installed. So I am ready at this point to load my light grip mat with my cardstock um, and let my maker cut. Okay, now that our cut is complete, we're just going to go ahead and remove the excess cardstock. Um, it comes up really easily because we're using our light grip mat. If you have a standard grip mat um, that has lost some of its life, it's not quite as sticky, feel free to use it with cardstock. Um, it still works really well with that. Um, now we're just going to gently pull this up from our mat. I love this spiral way it cuts, it's so fun. All right, we have it off. 
So you can you can fold your flowers um, a couple of different ways. You can start with this um, and fold it fold it from the center. When you do that, it creates sort of like a cup like this. Um, so you're gonna have space in the middle of your flower um, to put some other sort of design, uh, a jewel. I have given that um, that tipper trick in the past, or you can like roll a piece of cardstock and do another fun color in the middle. Uh, we're going to start from this end and give a super tight uh, looking flower. So guys, this is super easy. You can obviously um, just, just start folding from this end using your fingers. This quilling tool makes it so fast, so easy, and so tight. It's amazing. Um, a lot of people when they start uh, rolling their flower will put a little bit of glue right here I don't like to glue the paper flowers at all until I get to the very end because I like for them uh, I like to have the freedom to like to make them uh, Spread out more or tighter um, and if you've glued it then you're pretty much stuck. So you're just gonna stick um, I don't know if you can see this or not the quilling tool has um, some little slits right here and then you're gonna put your paper in the slit so that it is holding, uh, you can see it's in between right there. So you just put that in the very end and you start rolling. It's that easy. Um, just keep it, keep the bottom of the cut file even. Um, if it comes, if, if it becomes a little bit uneven, that's okay. You can manipulate that afterward uh, by just pushing down in the middle. Uh, I'll probably show you that again in just a second. This method is so fast, guys. You can make a ton of these paper flowers in no time at all. Uh, with this quill tool, I really love it. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, like I don't use anything else from uh, that paper crafting tool set, um, but this I really love. We're almost finished here. You can see how quickly it has gone. And you see how I've kind of, it's kind of transitioned on me. It's moved down a little bit, but that's okay because I can just push it um, and make it even again. So we're at the end here and you just pull the quill tool out. That simple. Um, at this point, I, this is the base of my flower. So I'm gonna just fold it down on, um, on itself and then kind of let this go. Now you want it to be a little bit controlled, uh, but kind of let it go, let it unravel a little bit. So you can see it looks like it's a beautiful blooming flower now. It's not super tight. You can see the individual petals. I really like this look. So now what I'm gonna do is take my glue gun um, and go ahead and add glue to the bottom here. And then I'll set my flower on top of it. This, um, you don't have much time to manipulate this once you've put your hot glue on it. Um, so make sure Make sure you like the placement and everything before you put it down. Okay, we're gonna go back in design space. We're gonna start with our uh, felt flower now. Um, okay, so our felt is nine by 12, so I'm just gonna size this down to fit on um, that felt sheet. Um, everything else will stay the same. I'm just gonna hit make it. Again, it is correct on my mat, so I can quickly connect to my machine. And now I'm going to go in um, and press felt wool fabric as my material. And um, I'm gonna put a little bit of extra pressure on this just because I'm, it, a felt wool is a little bit thicker. Um, so I just wanna make sure that it cuts through really well. And you can see it tells me automatically to load my rotary blade uh, in clamp B. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll load my mat. So I'm gonna load this fabric mat with my felt. Um, you can see we've used this mat before for some felt. Um, so feeling it, I'm like, eh, it's not super, super sticky. Um, I could probably use it and then put some tape down, but I have all of this area over here that's still super sticky. Um, so I'm just gonna load it on this end and load it into my Cricut backward from what you would think is normal, but it's totally fine. Okay, so now we are going to load our um, rotary blade and if you haven't done this before um, it has this kind of gear on the back and a shield on the front and you just need to make sure that the shield is facing out the gears um, align with the gears in the clamp you need to make sure that it's not too high because if it's too high it won't um, register so it needs to be all the way flush down with the clamp 
And then you'll just clamp it in there and load your mat. Okay, so we're just gonna remove this excess here. Um, you can see the rotary blade did an excellent job and so far we haven't had any spots where um, it didn't cut good. Oh my goodness, that came off seamlessly. It did a fantastic job. Now we're just gonna remove it um, from our mat here. Since this is thicker, you don't necessarily have to be super careful with it. Um, and then we're gonna find the end. We're gonna roll uh, from this outer end on all three flowers, um, just so that it looks the same and you guys can get a comparison of the three different. Um, so we're just gonna get our Limb Lily glue gun. We're gonna put a little bit of glue right here on the very end um, and start our roll. Okay, so now we're just gonna work in probably four in, four inch increments with our hot glue. I love this little Lynn Lily glue gun. Uh, we sing its praises all the time because of the small head on it. It gives us a nice thin stream of glue so we don't have like a lot of excess. I think with the bigger glue guns, for me specifically, I tend to be pretty heavy handed with uh, my hot glue. And honestly, with felt and paper and those sorts of things, you don't need a ton of glue um, because it just adheres really well with a small amount. Um, so if you can find a smaller glue gun, I like this Lynn Lily one, honestly, like you're conserving a lot of glue. Um, you don't have, like, you, when I'm rolling this, I'm not pushing out a ton of extra glue toward the bottom that's just being wasted. Um, I don't have all of the mess that I would have with a bigger one. So if you can, try to find a little one uh, for these projects. I really love that tip. It has helped me a lot. So I'm just um, rolling you can see I'm actually I'm pushing from the inside here uh, because it wasn't as flat as I wanted it to be. So try to just be, I got to talking and wasn't paying attention. Um, try to just make sure that that's really even right here as you're rolling so that you'll have a nice symmetric flower when you're finished. Uh, again, just four-ish inches. Um, this glue does dry pretty quickly, so I don't wanna put a large stream of glue down um, and then have it dry before I get, get to it. So that's why I'm doing these smaller sections. So guys, if you don't love hot glue, um, you could definitely do like a running stitch with this um, and sew it together. That is definitely an option. It will take longer for sure, um, but that's a good option. I don't necessarily recommend um, a dry adhesive like you know your double-sided ATG or uh, that sort of glue, just because I, first of all, I think application would sort of be a nightmare um, with it wanting to stick uh, to that felt like just on the gun, I don't know. I, I feel like that would be a massive headache. This is the quickest way that I have found for sure. Um, but I'm sure that there are other methods that are also good. So we're nearing our end and you can see it's already becoming a beautiful flower. Um, if for some reason you cut this, this large amount of felt, um, and halfway through decided that you liked the size of it as is, you can definitely snip off um, and finish your flower like halfway through. And then you could use the rest of it to roll another flower if you wanted to. Um, another option, if you get finished with this and decide you want your flower bigger or you wanted it like multiple, uh, multicolored or something um, you could definitely do that too so what you would do is just finish the flower and then um, take the beginning end so the one that we started with in the center um, and then just add it to the outside and keep rolling kind of like what we're doing right now um, so those are some awesome tips to making some even larger flowers and different colored flowers. Um, you could even mix uh, material if you wanted to. So if you wanted to do like, you know, like a solid cardstock and then a glitter one or like a leather and then a satin. I mean, you know, you could definitely just mix some stuff up that way too. Um, so we're finishing here and then we're gonna go ahead and add our glue to the base right here. Finish our roll and then 
cap that bottom off with that round there. All right, and now we have that cute rolled felt flower. Now that we're finished with that, we're gonna go ahead uh, back into design space and size for our leather flower. Um, and then we're almost finished with these. These are super quick to put together, guys. Okay, now that we're back in design space, I've just measured the piece of leather that I have. Um, it's roughly eight by six inches, so I'm gonna go ahead and size this down. Um, we'll say eight and see where that puts us. That is not gonna work. So uh, we'll just size it down a little bit. You see, when I made it eight inches, it made it eight by seven. Um, so that's not, <laughs> it's not gonna work out for us. So we'll just size it down. Okay, so we've sized it down to six and a half inches. And now we are going to go browse our material and select the correct leather option. So I'm just gonna um, type in leather and when I do that, it yields several results. Uh, you can see there's the suede, there's faux leather, metallic leather, genuine leather, tooling leather. Um, and tooling leather is um, what I'm gonna select. Tooling leather is, is a broad um, category. I feel like it, it just, generally it's a vegetable tan. It's a softer top so that um, you can tool it. You can uh, use you know your little tools to, to um, put names in it or whatever. I also specifically like tooling leather uh, with our engraving um, tool on the maker. It's pretty neat. Um, so I'm gonna choose tooling leather two to three ounces because that is the weight that I have. Um, I'm going to press done. And then it's gonna tell me that I need to load my knife blade and the clamp. So just like the rotary blade, the top of the knife blade looks like the rotary blade and that it has that little plastic shield and it has the gears. Um, so you put it in the same way. You just make sure that it's flush, that those gears are touching um, and that the shield is to the front of the maker. Um, then I just close my clamp and then load my leather onto my strong grip mat. Okay, so this is finished. Uh, just so you know, with leathers and even thicker leathers, um, the maker does make several passes. So um, it will start, make a pass all the way around, and it like the thicker leathers, it wants to make 16 passes, um, which takes quite a bit of time. So if you're cutting leather, don't think that you're gonna do it really quickly. It does take a little bit of time to do that. Uh, so just like the cardstock and the felt, I'm gonna remove the excess that I don't need and then pull up the leather from my mat. You can see it does leave quite a bit of mess because the back of my leather is almost like a suede feel. Um, so for sure reference um, some of our videos or at least one of our videos on how to clean your mat. Uh, you definitely wanna get more life out of these mats. Okay, so like with our other flowers, we're gonna start with this end. Okay, so make sure um, that you are rolling this the correct way. Obviously, it depends on how you want. Um, but if I want like the the felt side uh, to the not felt, if I want the suede side to be more visible, um, then I'm going to start rolling it this way. Um, so that this would be like the inside of the flower. If I want um, the actual true side of the leather to be visible, then I'm gonna roll it this way. Um, like with the other flowers, we're gonna be using uh, hot glue to put these together. Um, so I'm gonna start it the exact same way that I did with um, the felt. Just start with a little um, bit of glue, start rolling. And it's the same process. I'm rolling the exact same way in about four, four inch um, increments. This flower is going to bulk up pretty quickly because of how thick uh, the leather is. So it will probably, although we cut it at a smaller um, dimension because our leather was smaller, it's probably gonna be just guessing at least the same size as the other ones, um, which is interesting to think about. Um, one thing I will say, you can definitely use leather glue on these. I, I don't personally want to do that because um, of the way that 
it dries. It does take a little bit of time to dry. It's still pretty pliable uh, for quite some time after um, setting. So I, I honestly think that hot glue is the best option for this as well. You can get your leather at several different places. I think this leather came um, from Hobby Lobby. Um, I have found that Etsy is a really, really good source for leather as well. Um, there are a couple of different shops on Etsy that have oodles and oodles of colors of um, leather, um, different weights, they have different prints, um, and you can get them in different sizes too. So you can get them anywhere from like, I think a four by six is the smallest ones that I have found. You could probably get them smaller. Um, but a four by six all the way up to, to hides or eight by tens and um, there's lots of different options for for leather with Etsy. Another good option is to um, get in touch with like a local um, upholsterer or like a um, furniture company and see if they have any remnants that they would sell you. Most of them would probably give them to you actually, uh, but those are normally really good sizes for projects like this. Um, so that's a really good option as well. Guys, we're almost finished with this. I feel like this one went a whole lot quicker um, than our felt one. Again, we're gonna finish it up the same ways that we finished the other one by putting a little bit extra glue on that bottom that's gonna cap off the bottom. And there we go. We'll let that dry a little bit and then flip it over. Look how pretty that is. I love this look. So here's all three of these finished rolled flowers. Again, this was using the exact same file um, for each flower. We did size it accordingly um, to, to the size of uh, material that we had. Um, but it's such like, there's such different awesome looks for being the same file. As you can see though, like each of them were, it, it was super easy to do all of them. Like, um, I just, your maker did all the work rolling one, um, on it. Well, the cardstock is easier just because you can use that uh, tool, the quilling tool, but rolling, um, leather, I thought it might be a little more difficult because it's thicker and maybe a little bit more difficult to um, handle, but uh, they were all really easy to make guys. Okay guys, I hope you had so much fun watching me make these flowers. I hope that you got some awesome tips and tricks that you can utilize in your crafting endeavors. And remember guys, if you love these files, go to makersgonnalearn.com, become a member with us. You get access to all of these files, all of those rolled cut files that I showed you, plus so many more. Um, we would love to have you guys as a member. Uh, if you are not a subscriber to our YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. I hope you did. Um, and we would love to have you come back and craft with us another day. Thanks so much.